Welcome back to Inkscape Lesson 3, Drawing Original Objects Using the Bezier Tool. We are going to step into a whole new area. So far, we've just been messing around with very basic shapes, right? Squares and rectangles, but not all of life and not all of art is made up of squares and rectangles. So when it comes to more precise objects, how do we use Inkscape in order to create something that has a little more curve to it or even a little more detail to it. Well, that's what we're going to look at today. The Bezier tool. What, what is Bezier? What is this French word I'm throwing around? Well, let's take a quick look. If you Google search Bezier curve or Bezier curve template, um, you will find that Bezier curves are really a fancy word for creating curves using very specific handles and very specific manipulations. When you were a kid going to elementary school, your parents probably bought you a geometry set that came in a little tin box. And inside that geometry set was a compass and a ruler and probably a couple of rectangular squares. And maybe this, a Bezier curve. Um, those squares that you had, those triangles, we're all meant to help you draw angles to very specific degrees. Usually there was a 45 degree, a 90 degree, a 30 degree, and a 15 degree. And you would use those triangles to be able to draw angles. Well, if you happen to get a bigger set, you might have also had a Bezier curve tool. And this allowed you to create curves with varying radii or radiuses, but it's called a radii. So this thing may look familiar. It is called a Bezier curve tool, and it is used to create curves like these with all varying degrees of radius or radii. Okay, and that's what we're gonna learn to do today in the digital world. We're gonna learn to use the Bezier tool. Now, why? Well, a couple of reasons. Reason number one, not everything in life is a straight line. And reason number two is, when we had made our Canadian flag last time, we had gone on the internet and we had borrowed this maple leaf off of the internet. Well, that's not allowed, folks. It is not allowed for you to steal somebody else's artwork off the internet. We just did that in order to be able to teach a lesson. When you create something that is your artwork, it has to be 100% your artwork. If you had handed this in and I had ungrouped your piece, and I had dragged this over on its own, and I had noticed, wait a minute, that's not created in Inkscape. That is actually created from something else, from somewhere else. I would not include it, and I would only mark your elements over here based on knowing that they were created in Inkscape. How do I know they're created in Inkscape? Well, when I click on them, and I go to this tool, the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, I get up all of the nodes that make up your element, right? If I grab this thing and I grab your node here in the corner, I can not only reshape and resize it, but I can also curve the corners and change them. There are many ways, many ways for me to know and understand whether you built your object yourself in Inkscape or whether you went and got it off the internet. Notice when I click on this object, no anchor nodes come up at all. Anchor nodes are the basic structure of any Inkscape geometry. This line and this line meet at anchor nodes. Same thing for this big one on the outside. This corner and this corner have anchor nodes, which can be manipulated, but they're all part of what goes on in Inkscape. So we're going to learn to use the Bezier tool. If you look in your toolbox and you search long enough, you are going to find just above what looks like the pencil tool, the Draw Bezier Curves and Straight Lines tool. What is the Bezier Curve tool? It is essentially a connect the dots tool. I am going to left mouse click and create an anchor node. Anchor nodes are the basic object in all of Inkscape. I'm going to left mouse click and release and create a second anchor node, and another anchor node, and another anchor node, 
and another anchor node, and another anchor node. And by the time I click on the first anchor node I created, I get up an object. The object is created, back to my Edit Paths by Nose tool. The object is created using anchor nodes. These anchor nodes are really what create the object. Inkscape just makes a line to connect them. And these anchor nodes can all be manipulated after they've been built. You can move them. You can delete them. Select, right mouse click, delete the anchor node. Delete the whole thing if you want to. Edit Undo. Bring back up my anchor nodes. As I'm using the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, the property bar changes, and all manner of new options come up in the property bar, such as Join Selected Nodes, Break Path at Selected Nodes, Curve Selected Nodes, Delete Selected Nodes, Insert New Nodes, I can come anywhere along the line, double click, and I can create a new node so I can manipulate this object even further. I can select any node that I don't want, and I can use the property bar to delete the selected nodes. And what are Bezier curves? Bezier curves are objects that are created using a very specific parameter known as the Bezier curve tool and it allows us to manipulate this object extensively, extensively, after it's been built. Look, I've got a whole bunch of nodes. If I were to simply delete all but two, I'm going to leave one at the bottom, I'm going to leave one at the top. So now I've got two nodes, one at the top, one at the bottom. And Bezier curves always have these handles attached to them. And these handles allow you to manipulate the object by changing not only the pitch or height of the curve, how the line enters the node, but also the distance at which the line enters the node. So if I do my job correctly, I can take that multi-sided object that I had a few minutes ago and I can actually turn that into something much more circular. Because any object in Inkscape can be manipulated after it's been built. That is the strength of a vector-based drawing program. We can do manipulations in Photoshop to pixels, but not nearly to the extent that we can in Inkscape. So again, Bezier curves, what are they? They are curves now, a curve is simply determined or defined as the way the line enters and exits the anchor nodes. And they can be controlled. They can be controlled by these Bezier curve handles that are at the end of every Bezier node. Bezier curves. It's going to be the way that we build everything in Inkscape from this point on because it's got to be original artwork created by you. Not things you pulled off the internet. You'll see what that's good for in the next lesson. But in this lesson, Bezier curves. So watch me use the tool again. I go down to my Bezier curve drawing tool and I left mouse click to engage it. I go anywhere on the screen I want and I left mouse click and release and it makes an anchor node. I go anywhere I want and left mouse click and release again. Anchor node, left mouse click, anchor node, left mouse click, anchor node. And when I want to create a solid object, one that can be filled, I click my final node right on top of my first. And that creates the object. Now, this object that you've created is just like any other object I've shown you already. It can be scaled up or down in size. It can be squished and squashed. It can be rotated. It can be right mouse click, set fill. It can be right mouse click, set stroke. The stroke size can be manipulated. Anything we create in Inkscape can be manipulated after it's been built, and that allows your creativity to soar. 
And even after you've built all of that, simply go back to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, select an object, and you can bring up those anchor nodes and you can change them. Right? You can make this thing a trapezoid when it used to be just a skewed box. You can go in and double click anywhere along a line and you can add nodes and manipulate further. Or you can do what we did a few minutes ago. You can delete nodes, getting this thing all the way down to a two node object. And then because of the Bezier curve handles, you can further manipulate this thing into any sort of a spherical shape that you want. And it's all about manipulating how this line enters or exits the node, right? This line coming around the corner enters that node sharply or at an extreme angle. The pitch of that curve can be very high or very flat. Inkscape allows you a lot of manipulation, gives you the opportunity to build anything that your mind can conceive of. And then, once it's all built, you can treat it just like any other object in Inkscape. You can move it. You can layer it on top of something. You can do anything you want to it. But you've got to understand that we're in a brand new area of dealing with nodes. Double click, nodes, anchor nodes that allow you control over what you're doing. All right. Let that lesson sink in for a little bit, and when we come back in lesson number four, I'm going to show you how to use the Bezier tool with purpose to build something that looks like it's supposed to look. Specifically, we're going to build this Canadian maple leaf over again. That way, when we put our new creation in the middle of the flag, it is 100% our own work. All right, I'll see you in lesson number four very soon.